Hopefully I'll right. screw it up for everybody else. <laughs> Yo, I, I can set a low standard. Yeah. I, you know. I've noticed. Yeah. 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 You've done this before, right? One time. Where? At uh, Brew Kaipa. <clears throat> yeah. Brew Kaipa does a podcast? No. So it was for uh, a, a nationwide veterinary clinic that interviewed me regarding police canines. Uh, VCA? VCA. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And it, was, I, I, it was called like <clears throat> pause for something or I don't know. Some had to do the pause. And they were recording at Brew Kaipa. And uh, they hit up Brew Kaipa and said, hey, if we come in at like 10 o'clock in the morning, can we record this? It, you know, you have like a great, you know, themed restaurant. It's a good it looks good. It. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know how much they paid to have it open, if they paid at all. But uh, we went in there and hung out and drank some beer. And at 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talked about uh, police dogs. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It was, that was my first one. This won't be as fun as that. This is this is cool too. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. yeah, as my second time, I feel a little bit less uh, nervous yeah. than my first time. Well, I appreciate you doing it. You're our guinea pig, you know. So this is, uh, uh, well, the first official uh, Ukaipa 360 episode. Okay. Yeah. And, All right. Uh, Hopefully, I'll screw it up for everybody else. <laughs> Yo, know, I, I can set a low standard. Yeah. I, you know, I've noticed. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Set a low standard, so everybody else just they look like studs. <laughs> Well, so uh, we're here. welcome to uh, uh, the beautiful conference room B yeah. uh, here at, at, at City Hall. Um, we're in the process of building a real podcast studio. Um, so uh, I think in uh, uh, maybe two, three weeks, that'll be ready to go. But in the meantime, uh, we've got kind of a makeshift uh, set up here. We've got, you notice we've got the wires hanging down from the TV and yeah. nothing really on the walls here. So we you know, throw up some flags here. It's kind of cheesy, but you know, it works. This side looks like I'm on Joe Rogan. There's right? cameras everywhere. There's yeah. lights. I got like production people. Mm-hmm. It's very professional. Yeah. When you did Rogan, was it pretty much like this? Uh, almost as professional. Yeah. Well, yeah. good. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you doing this and yeah. being here. What are you wearing, by the way? That's like uh, like uh, holes in your sleeves. It's very is it very tactical? Well, I guess it's 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 hotter than hell in half of look, Georgia. Look outside. at you flexing. You you've been working out. Well. For an old, slow, broken man, I tr- I tried to do my best, but it's hotter <laughs> than heck outside, so you got to wear something to negate the heat. I'm gonna try putting holes in my sleeves. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I work out. You know, it takes a, it takes a lot to maintain this physique. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of calories every day, sitting in a chair for hours. Well, you have lost a lot of weight. Well, I don't know about that. You have uh, how much weight have you lost? About 23 pounds in the last three months, actually. That's pretty solid. Yeah. No, you inspired me, though. You uh, really, uh, we've had discussions about being healthier and working out and supplements and drinking water. You know, drinking, <laughs> drinking water. I'm still not great about it. <laughs> yeah. Diet Coke, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Every I once can't, in a while, a little water. I'm a hypocrite uh, today. Yeah. I got my monster. <laughs> I live on caffeine, nicotine. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Well, we're talking today about public safety, which I think it's really fitting that. Um, uh, the first podcast we do is on public safety uh, yeah. because not only is public safety local government's number one responsibility, but I think particularly here in Ukaipa, uh, this is a community that really embraces public safety, um, both fire and police. Mm-hmm. Um, this town really embraces our our uh, law enforcement personnel um, in a big way. Yeah, you know, I mean, and and we spend sixty three percent of our budget on public safety. Yeah, uh, which is which is big. Yeah, it's a hard time to be in law enforcement. Yeah, it is, yeah. and fire service. Yeah, uh, the the recruiting's just not there. People don't want to, you know, be in public safety anymore. Whether yeah. it's the paramedicine, fire service, or law enforcement. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I think it's just culture, society. You know, COVID. When I was coming you know, into the workforce, and early in my career. Um, I know I did a scent working uh, at the county for the Board of Supervisors. And there were always people trying to use a political angle to get their son or nephew hired into the county fire department yeah. because it was so competitive. Oh, yeah. And you could not get in. You had to have a connection. You had to be the yeah. son of a, of a well-known, you know, fire captain or, yep. you know, but times have changed. Yeah. I think that uh, 
the media sure hasn't helped. Uh, they've kind of demonized law enforcement. Um, I think that just culturally, um, you know, I think it's uh, uh, kind of frowned upon to be a, a you know blue collar worker nowadays. You know, I think that uh, you know they've they've harped on you know doing going to college and you know doing all these different things where you know back when I grew up, college wasn't for everybody, and not everybody had to go to college. You know, there's there's jobs for everybody, and uh, for me, you know, and a lot of other people, you know, law enforcement and the fire service is a blue collar hands-on job mm. and uh it fit for me yeah yeah you've done it for a long time yeah 23 years so you know you're the public safety manager here in Ukaipa. yeah uh, but you've got before coming to here you had a career in law enforcement and yeah. still do yeah and still do yeah um how did you get into it I mean, we, so you you worked uh, for the railroad was that your first law enforcement job no 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 um how did i get into it i don't know i i i, I grew up in los angeles and uh you know, back in the eighties in LA, I remember LAPD and they're still this way to this day, their uniform standards are impeccable. Mm. Um, it, it, even, you know, probably even worse back then, you know, those uniforms look like they were painted on the officers. So I think, I, I think we have a picture of, of our video of you in one of those. Let's, let's, let's take a look at that. I hope. Yeah. Is that, I don't know where you got is, that. Is that. That's you. That's, that's me. What, what are you doing? Those nunchucks? Oh, look at that. Those are amazing skills right there. Yeah, look at that. I almost probably hit myself five times. <laughs> I don't know where you got that. I can suspect where you got that. That was a... Uh, I, was I actually, protect my sources. That was actually a... Uh, I can't believe you found that. Uh, that was actually a search warrant for a, uh, a guy, every community. You were doing a search warrant there. That was a search warrant. Were those... So those were not your nunchucks. No, those were not those were department found. issues. No, 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 no. Those were okay. those were bad guy nunchucks. Okay, um, and uh, you know every community has uh, nunchucks. You know those, those people that they they kind of like terrorize the community, right? There's like ten or fifteen people in every community, and they're responsible for a large amount of property crime. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy, you're going to definitely have to uh, uh, black out that name on there, uh, but this guy just terrorized the the city that i worked in and stole everything yeah. so finally one day where there's enough probable cause we got enough and uh we hit his house um and i think he stole a safe or something like that from some jewelry store and we hit his house and uh you know in the house were these dumb tries and i thought it was a phenomenal opportunity <laughs> to um you know show off my lack of skills and uh, I, don't know, I was probably running on like, you know, 26 hours, no sleep at that point. So a lot of monster, a lot of monster. Yeah. Those are pretty good skills, though. You didn't pretty... hit yourself in the head. I, no. was, I was impressed. No, I, yeah, I was, was impressed <laughs> also. So that's I... when you were with Azusa. Yeah, that was Azusa. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I grew up in L.A. and I remember seeing LAPD all over the place and looking at them and, you know, remembering like how professional they were mm -hmm. and, um all my interactions with them growing up in, in, in school and outside of school, something about it, it, it just called to me. And, um, you know, I wanted to get into law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So I uh, was a, a cadet for the LA Sheriff's Department uh, from 18 to 21. Mm -hmm. And right about the time uh, I turned 20, 21, I applied and there was a huge hiring freeze. Couldn't get hired anywhere. I tested all over the place and mm -hmm. finally, uh, my sister was going to school up in Monterey County and uh, used to go up there and hang out. And I'm like, wow, you know, pretty cool place to, you know, go be a cop. So I worked up there in Monterey County for a year and a half, two years. For the Sheriff's Department? Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, it was all custody. Mm. Um, and I was alone at home. My sister went off to a semester at sea. So um she was gone and i'm you know up there by myself and you know uh it just really wasn't my place you know um so i uh applied to come back down here and i worked for the state for several years 10 years um working auto theft and narcotics um a lot of fraud uh and then was looking to move out of state around 2010 mm. and we worked this joint case together with the Union Pacific Railroad, and I looked at them like, man, these guys make a ton of money. So I think a lot of people don't know that um, railroads 
have their own police. Yeah. 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 They're, 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 it's a very unique, uh, private, uh, business, you know, uh, you know, for-profit corporation with a public police department and their police officers are dual sworn. So they're not only like state police officers in the state that they work in, but they also have federal powers which allows them to, you know, transverse. So real police officers per the California penal code, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, um, work there with the hope that, uh, we're going to move out of state, you know, cheaper life, slower life kind of felt like, you know, we were going a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Um, and we wanted something slower and every opportunity that I had to move out of state, I didn't take it. Mm -hmm. I just, I couldn't do it at the time. Uh, my kids were young. Um, you know, my parents, you know, lived, uh, you know, locally and, you know, I just didn't want to take, you know, the kids away from my parents and, you know, kind of, uh, displace them out of school. So we ended up not, uh, moving out of state and stayed here and then went to Azusa where I ended up retiring from in 2022. Okay. Very yeah. good. Very good. Um, and, uh, after you left Azusa after some time. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in a unique position with San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. that you are the only reserve deputy on the SED or, or SWAT team, right? Yeah, there's, uh, I am. I mean, yeah. I'm very, I'm very lucky. Um, I'm very fortunate and blessed to be a part of the agency. Mm -hmm. Um, and especially within the division that I'm in. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not, not only do I work for you, um, but I'm also a reserve deputy with the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department assigned to the Special Enforcement Division, which is SWAT. Right. Um, there are other reserves on the team. Uh, the majority of those uh, are, you know, highly specialized personnel. So physicians. Right. Uh, and they're like tactical medics and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. I'm the only knuckle dragger <laughs> that doesn't have, you know, those special skills. Yeah. Well, we're happy to, to share you with uh, with the sheriff's department because really, uh, the the uh, skills, but more importantly, I think in your role here as as a public safety manager, the relationships and connections uh, that you have built and continue to maintain um, in that role uh, are brought to bear here in the city, and we've been able to do some amazing things as a result. Uh, I think if anyone else were uh, in your position, we would not have those um, those benefits. But you know, we, we've had uh, there's something called Operation Consequences, right? Oh the, yeah. The, the Sheriff's Department. It's a it's very a successful, program, right? Countywide. Um, that program doesn't normally come to communities like Ukaipa. No, uh, Operation Consequences is an initiative of the sheriff. Mm -hmm. uh, he got grant funding or special funding through the County Board of Supervisors to combat um, drugs. Uh, gangs and uh, you know, I think that the most focus besides gangs and drugs was um, on ghost guns. Mm. Um, so that special funding um, allows the sheriff to host these things called Operation Consequences, and it moves around from uh, community to community within San Bernardino County. Um, and the majority of those are done in areas that have higher crime than Ukaipa. Right. So, but we were lucky enough to uh, have Operation Consequences come to Ukaipa, and uh, it was a great, successful day. Well, Ukaipa is lucky enough to have someone who has the connections to bring uh, programs like Operation Consequences uh, uh, to the city. Um, you know, it's um, you work full time for the city, mm -hmm. um, and then you also have your your SED or SWAT duties, mm -hmm. and you can't always know uh, when you're going to get called in. To do that, you know, nope. bad, bad guys don't operate um, no. on a on a uh, nine to five, uh, you know, workday schedule. So, no, uh, there are times where you get called out. Uh, you got to scramble with your calendar. There are times where you've worked a full day here for the city, more than a full day, because you put in a lot of hours. You go home, you're getting ready to go to bed, and you get the call. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of times. And then you're out all night, and then you report back to work the next day here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a struggle. It's a balance, but I'm lucky to have that balance. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're lucky too. So give me, I I know you and I have talked, and you've had some pretty interesting SWAT calls uh, recently. Uh, somewhere you're taking fire and returning fire. G give me a give me a good story. Uh, something that happened recently. This is not live, right? No, it's not. I live. can't talk about this, sir. I sure can't. You can. No, sure no, you no, can. no, I can't. I can't. Just a little story. I, 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 you don't I, have to name names. I, I really, I really can't. <laughs> I'll get fired. 
For sure. <laughs> yeah, but this sure. would be a great episode. <laughs> yeah, it would. It would. <laughs> For sure. I'll, okay, act it out. I'll do it. <laughs> Mine it? Yeah. You know I mean? Mine it? <laughs> okay, Joe's the bad guy. Pull your gun. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. That's what you should do on this. You should do like uh, pocket dumps. You've seen that? No. Yeah. So uh, Rogan does it. Uh, Sean Ryan does it. Mm. And he, he says, okay, like, you know, uh, pocket dump. Like, what do you carry every single day? Mm. You know? Oh. And uh, I like that. Yeah. Like, like what, what do you carry every single day? And it's, it's not only on, about like the safety and um, preparedness aspect, but, right. you know, a lot of people have like some really cool watches. Yeah, or but the really problem cool is a lot of the people wallets. we're going to interview on this podcast are city employees. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to have to start firing people <laughs> yeah. based on what's like, in like, my pockets. Like the bindle of Coke comes <laughs> out or something like that. <laughs> Speaking of, all right. So, <laughs> so uh, tell me, how is it that you ended up at the, the city of UK? How did, how did you, cause this is a, um, a pretty big shift in, in career direction for you. Yeah. So uh, uh, law enforcement, you like the term knuckle dragger. You're out yeah. in the street. You're, you're busting bad guys. Yep. Um, and now you're here and we're trying to um, make you into a domesticated animal. Yeah. Good luck. Um, you know, you've got you at a desk yeah. um, and you go out on the street a lot. Um, yeah. But, you know, you're also having to use a computer and send emails that are not offensive to people. Hopefully, right. Yeah. Right. So, trying. Yeah. Uh, how, how was it that you, you came to work here? Um, so it was 2022 and I was kind of just looking for a change in life. You know, it was post uh, uh, BLM, post George Floyd, post COVID. Um I think that the truth is, is that for pretty much my entire career, you know, uh, I can admit it now, but, uh, you know, I was very selfish and uh, I prioritized work uh, like many, you know, law enforcement and firefighters do. Um, You fall in love with the job and you prioritize work over family. And I was young and I had young kids and, um, you know, we were kind of raising our kids i've told you this before like at the same time we're raising ourselves and i made a lot of mistakes and um you know uh kind of matured enough to see that i need to focus a little bit more at home you Mm -hmm. know i was uh driving very far to work and i would sleep at work my entire work week and then uh, commonly you have court or training, mm-hmm. you know, on your days off. So I'm still sleeping at work. So I'm gone five, six, seven days a week, come home for one. And I work graveyards almost my whole career. So I'm a zombie on my days off anyway. Uh, you know, I just wasn't, you know, probably a very good husband or a good father. And I just wanted to change. Yeah. So uh, 2022, Um, I got approached by the uh, former city manager and said, hey, we have this job. Um, The person who's in it is going to be retiring. Mm -hmm. I your name came up. Are you interested? And to work, you know, um, you know, and and have the opportunity to spend more time at home and more time with my family and, you know, be a better dad. I'm going to take that chance. I want to talk about your job a little bit, because I think most people. You know, they know we we have sheriff's deputies that we contract with, with the county. Or, you know, they know that we contract with the fire department. I think a lot of people don't know that we have a public safety manager or what a public safety manager is. But but in that one role, you got a lot of responsibilities, and you're yeah. you're 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 a busy guy. You manage our contracts. You know, our our uh, police contract of about you know thirteen million dollars this mm-hmm. year, and our fire contract with Cal Fire of mm-hmm. you know probably about ten million dollars yep. uh, this year, and uh, so you know, that's that's twenty three million dollars. Uh, of our budget that that you were in charge of, mm-hmm. of of managing, but on top of that, um, you had a lot of other responsibilities. Yeah, disaster response is one of the things that um, fall under you. And I got to tell you, um, uh, about a year ago, a year ago this month, when we got hit with uh, Tropical Storm Hillary, mm-hmm. um, I hadn't been on the job that long. I started in March and August. Uh, we have this, you know, uh, uh, hurricane bearing down, uh, and then you know turned into a tropical storm and slammed in Yukaipa and there was devastation. Um, the preparation that I saw leading up to that, the coordination uh, with not just our fire personnel and police personnel, but regionally, um, you led the setting up of, of uh, operations uh, at our community center. Yep. Um, and um, you know, everyone, everything was just coordinated, everyone yeah. working together. And I think um, 
that's that's the reason primarily that lives were not lost here in Ukaipa uh, when that when that storm hit. Yeah, we were very lucky. I think yeah. I, I remember that. I remember you know leading up to it, and we were lucky in you know that storm that we had a heads up it was coming, right? It wasn't the earthquake that you know just sprung on us or the you know forest fire. Um, we knew it was coming, and we prepared. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, w- the public works, uh, Megan's team over the community center, the fire mm-hmm. department, the police department, everyone upstaffed, everyone pitched in. Our CERT team, you know, filled, I think, over 14,000 sandbags wow. in four days. Wow. Um, and uh, we were having to borrow sand from neighboring communities. Um, you know, so everyone pitched in, you know, it, it, we're lucky it ended up well. Well, we were fortunate the the storm wasn't wasn't worse than it ended up being, um, yeah. but it was a powerful storm, and we were more than fortunate and lucky. We we were uh, blessed to have the right people in the right place at the right time, um, and uh, you did a phenomenal job Thanks. organizing the preparation and the response. Thanks. No, I remember was, you were, you were new here. I was. I called you up. I said it's time to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> put put your pants on. Yeah. Meet me at the community I, center. I, I remember that. And then uh, when the, when the time came to make that decision on declaring local emergency. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm thinking. I haven't even been here in six months and I'm having to sign this declaration of, yeah, I'm like, of, Hey, of, sign, of, this. Of <laughs> sign this, sign this, sign this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, thankfully knock on wood, you know, it, it all, it all worked out. Um, we sustained, um, we thought at the time it was about $5 million of damage to city infrastructure. Yep. Uh, turns out it was, um, under three, um, and we're going to get about 80% of that reimbursed to us through a state, you know, emergency funds. CDAA. Yep. The mm-hmm. California Disaster Act. Correct. California Disaster Assistance Act. Right. Yeah. Which is another big part of your job is, you know, tracking everything the way it needs to be tracked. Yeah. Submitting those forms, following up. That's a, that's, a, that's a huge, yeah, so huge job in and of itself. When I, uh, when I first came here, um, my, the, the, the role I filled, uh, was for the outgoing emergency operator, emergency services coordinator, which was uh, Sherry O'Connell. She worked here for a very long time. Amazing woman. Um, she also worked for the sheriff's department before coming to the city. Mm. Um, and that role expanded. Um, we have, you know, uh, contractors that work for us in essence, right? Cal Fire through uh, for the fire department and San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department for our police services. And in any time where you have somebody working for you, uh, you know, communication is very important. And I think that you recognize that and the rest of the city recognize that. And um, that's my job, right? I'm, the, I'm the, the, you know, person in between the city and the police department and the city and the fire department that relays, you know, messages that are important from the city to the police department or to the fire department. Um, and, you know, kind of, you know, points you know, those agencies in the direction that are important to the city. And then on the flip side, you know, my job is to be the cheerleader for the fire department and the cheerleader for the police department. And when they need equipment or training or funding or staffing, you know, I come over here and, you know, I, I shake my pom poms and try to get it. And if that doesn't work, I start banging on desks screaming, (laughs) you know, so, um, yeah, I can, I can verify that. Yeah. Yeah. So in addition to that, yeah, it's, uh, uh, not only, you know, my, from the public service or public safety side, you know, I work cooperatively with our fire chief, Grant Malinowski, and our, you know, captain, uh, Mike Walker, the sheriff's department, you know, to, to uh, you know, direct our public safety. Um, and those are great relationships, but I also manage all of our grants and our Narcan programs and our active shooter programs and, right. you know, teach classes for the city. At our SOP team? I direct which, our SOC team. Which yep. we'll talk about in a minute here. But, um, uh, you know, I think a lot of people don't stop to reflect on um, how, as a, as a city that contracts for police and fire, um, how that works, right? I mean, yes, we, we contract with the Sheriff's Department, we contract with Cal Fire, but um, the job, our job at City Hall doesn't end the day we sign the contract, right? Yeah. Like we, don't, we don't just hand it off to them and then they run their program. Um, you know, we, we like to say... Ukaipa Police Department, Ukaipa right. Fire Department. Yeah, and we we have been fortunate in that our partners at the Sheriff's Department and, and at Cal Fire um, make allowances for how we want services uh, provided and the approach here in Ukaipa, right? Which may be very different 
than what some other communities are looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, on the on the policing side, um, you know, not long after I started, I mean, right after I started, um, the city's um, police captain retired, mm -hmm. and um, Sheriff Dykus came here and met with me and said, you know, we're, I'm going to get you a new uh, police captain to run your station. Um, what are you looking for? And I really appreciated that, uh, the opportunity to give that input. And, and it gave me a chance to say to him, look, um, we don't want this to be the vacation station, mm -hmm. right, for deputies. This council and this administration, we want an aggressive approach to law enforcement. We want a captain who's going to be uh, lighting a fire uh, under his guys to hit the streets hard and aggressively enforce the law. That's what uh, the, the citizens of Ukaipa want. Right? Mm -hmm. And while Ukaipa's crime rates are lower than in a lot of communities, we certainly have our issues uh, here. And we've got, uh, I think if a lot of people would be surprised if, if they were aware of uh, the level of uh, illegal drug activity yeah. uh, that happens staggering. in Ukaipa, right? And, and that drug activity leads to a lot of other crimes, yeah, you know, some violent, some property crimes, um, and that's all tied in with our, our homeless issues as well, right? And so, um, I think one of the one of the things you've done exceedingly well is bridge that gap between the administration at City Hall and the personnel at the Sheriff's Department to say, look, here's what the city is expecting out of this contract. And this is the direction, the the approach we're expecting, and then on the flip side, coming back and saying, listen. Here are the challenges we're facing to execute, yeah. right? Um, yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, the, the expectation of the city, you know, isn't a reality. Right. You know, and, and my job is to, you know, kind of be the translator. You know, can we get it done? You know, is it ethical, moral, legal within policy? Right. You know, uh, can we get it done? And uh, if it's not, to explain that to the city. And then on the flip side is to take the mess, you know, the the the... I guess it would be, you know, community expectations that, you know, city hall's hearing, you know, about things that we need done in our community and go relay that to our fire department and police department and, you know, kind of help, you know, direct and manage those activities. Mm -hmm. And because of that type of communication and coordination, we've we've had a lot of success with our, our homeless um, efforts, um, with our efforts to crack down on known drug houses. Yeah. Right. Um, kind of serial offenders that have been operating in our city for a very long time. Uh, we've known who they are. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in working with sheriff's department personnel, our code enforcement, um, um, our city attorney's office. The DA's uh, office. The, the DA's office yep. to really crack down. Um, and it, it's, it's working. It is working. Yeah. We have a, a great relationship, you know, with uh, obviously the sheriff's department and the fire department. And they collectively, you know, together, um, you know, help us with these issues. Right. Um, so yeah, we, we've killed it when it comes to homelessness, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, just to clarify, we're not killing the homeless people. No, that's, no, no, that's not we're definitely not doing that. Okay, good. We're definitely not doing that. You know, no, that's the rumor though. The rumor right. is that we, uh, load them up in a car and, and drop them off in a, in a dump site somewhere. Right. Which is, uh, not at all what we're doing. And what we're going to, I do want to dig into that because that, that homeless strategic plan and the execution of that plan, um, have been tremendously successful, um, over the last, you know, less than a year um, since it launched. Um, uh, I, I want to get into that. But first, I want to talk about something big that happened here in Ukaipa uh, on June 14th. And uh, something that, that you uh, really drove. Uh, it was hugely successful. First time it's, it's happened here in Ukaipa, we did an, an active shooter training at, at Ukaipa High School. Yeah. And not just for our police uh, and our fire personnel, but, oh. but, but regionally. I went out there. Um, just really incredible and very realistic. Oh yeah. Very realistic. Um, uh, talk real briefly about that. Cause there's a video that was put together and we're, I want to show that video. In fact, yeah. let's show the video now and then let's, let's okay. talk, let's, let's, let's talk it. about it. Yeah. Today we're collaborating with uh, law enforcement allies around the region and our fire department first responders to uh, conduct this uh, all together critical training of active shooter to teach our first responders how to stop the, stop the killing and then follow it up with stop the dying. So any victims who were shot while they were, uh, while the active shooting was happening, they were learning how to save lives after we stopped the threat.
As we know in California with all our large-scale incidents, no one entity can handle everything. So we need to be able to work together under mutual aid, automatic aid, and we need to be able to work seamlessly together, which ultimately benefits the public save lives. One of the many lessons learned during each debrief, and there's a debrief after every single scenario, was that the officers showing up don't know where to go on this school campus. And so there is a delay, a significant delay, of showing up, getting fed a certain amount of information, moving around the campus to find where that incident has taken place. And every second that they are delayed is the potential for more casualties. So the value of bringing in first responders, partnering with your local law enforcement, your local fire department, and bringing them in, even if it's for a barbecue, but ideally, you know, working up to something like this is, it is invaluable. We need to lean on industry experts, and if that's a consulting company, or you know, anyone who is knowledgeable in these fields, we really need to think outside the box, work collaboratively together, and you know, provide the most realistic training possible. And I, I really feel like that's what we accomplished here. This collaboration is so important to keeping the public safe. And if more school districts held events like this, I think that we could really start to make a difference. That's uh, it's pretty sobering. It is. I, you know, I, I, uh, what really struck me when I first saw this video was how real everything looked. I mean, I feel like if we if we took this footage and we put it out on social media, people would feel like there's an active shooter situation going down at UCAP High School right now. And what's mm -hmm. scary is that, you know, I'm, I made that video very PC. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of footage that is much more realistic. Is that right? Uh, I just did not put it in a video. It's a bit that, too much. I think it would be a little too, too much. Yeah. You, you know, those kids that were um, UCAP High School students, um, that volunteered to be the actors studs i mean my gosh yeah um awesome uh, yeah it, it they made it very realistic the real I, so i think what was unique about uh this exercise a couple things first the level of realism yeah there were no shortcuts right um, no officers got to a locked door they can't just say okay pretend like we breached this door they had to no they had to breach the door they, they had to bust the door open right um but um but also um the number of, of agencies that participated, it wasn't just UKIPA, but I mean, just regional law enforcement and fire agencies, yeah. so, which, I, which, which is how this would really go down. Right? 100%. Is, you're yeah. gonna, so since I got here, uh, council had been saying, hey, we want active shooter training for law enforcement in the city. Um, and for one reason or another, it really never happened until this year. Uh, I was given the funding and the autonomy to be able to do it. Um, so we started planning it about eight months ago and, uh, you know, we brought in, um, consultants from Pangea consulting that helped us design our scenarios, to not only match the campus layout, but we're also realistic because the last thing you want to do is go to a training scenario as a law enforcement officer and get thrown into, you know, the, the training scenario with, you know, zombies that don't die and Martians from out of space and, you know, 500 bad guys, you know, from, you know, ISIS or something like that. Um, and it's not realistic. And you walk away saying that's never going to happen. Right. But every single one of our scenarios were modeled after an event that actually took place previously in communities just like ours around the United States. That's also sobering. So, right. you know, and then after each event, 
there is a debrief, there's a hot wash. Everyone gets in a school circle setting and the instructors, uh, we brought in instructors from uh, SED, the Sheriff's Department's you know, Specialized Enforcement Division that helped you know teach the tactical side and then their SWAT medics you know, to help with the uh, medical side, as well as Rancher Cucamonga's, you know, mm. tactical medics came in and helped us with, uh, you know, the medical side of each scenario. And during these scenarios, they were read the actual event. Mm -hmm. Hey, this scenario was modeled after, you know, Youngstown, Pennsylvania it occurred in this date. You know, let me read you exactly what happened. So they walk away from it thinking like wow like i just went through something that has already yeah, occurred right like i it's should prepare real. for that this isn't uh, someone's imagination this this actually happened somewhere yeah it right? actually happened we, what, you know, what we, was what was the response so you know i, I got this was unique to you kaipa the first time we've ever done something like this this is the know? first time that i believe I, I could be mistaken but based off the information i have this is the first time anyone in the county has done a multi-agency regional active shooter training uh, that was force on force that had real victims mm. that made you you know go through the scenarios like this. It's hard to believe. Yeah. Well. So, it's so what, what what was the reaction of the the people who took part in that training that day? At, at the end of the day, when 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 you know people were leaving, uh, everyone had a smile on their face. Everyone said thank you. I got dozens of. I can't wait for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, there are actually even some agencies and law enforcement officers that said, this is the first time I've ever been through active shooter training, which is scary. Uh, you know, my hope and is that, that, you know, th there's more active shooter training. Um, the, the reality is senseless violence occurs and we just need to pre be prepared for it when it does. Yeah. Yeah. I want to really dive into an important topic, uh, one of the biggest topics um, over the past couple of years here in Yucaipa, and that is um, the homeless issue and the success of the Yucaipa's homeless strategic plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've lived in Yucaipa since uh, 2015. Uh, I was working as city manager in the city of Canyon Lake for four years before coming here. And so living in this community over the past several years, I witnessed firsthand the increase in homelessness in mm -hmm. our streets. And it frustrated me to no end, and I was wondering what was being done about it. Um, I know that uh, a member of the city council, Matt Garner, when he he decided to run for city council two years ago, it was the homeless issue mm -hmm. um, that that prompted him to. He had he had an incident that happened um, at a at a restaurant mm -hmm. um, that that he had to step in and, and provide aid to mm -hmm. an elderly couple, and that was the final straw for him. And he said, you know, why isn't the city doing more? Yeah. Um, about this issue. And not just the fact that there are homeless people um, um, and that that number was growing, but um, the crime and the blight that came along with that. Because yep. uh, in Yucaipa, and I'm sure this is the same in many other communities, it seems that um, so many of our, our homeless um, are also involved with illegal, legal narcotics, sure. um, you know, addiction and, and mental health issues. But, you know, with, with drug addiction comes... Uh, crime, you know, mm -hmm. theft, burglaries, um, public health issues, and as our community was heading more and more in that direction, it was it was very troublesome to me. And so, um, it was music to my ears when I first started. When I was told by the city council, priority number one is public safety, and specifically getting hold of this homeless issue. Yeah, right. And so. Um, we we put together a, um, a homeless strategic plan. You did the first draft. Yeah. Um, then I took it from there and I I, I uh, made revisions and we went back and forth and just hammered it out. And of course there was. We got to give a lot of credit to Joe. Yes. Yeah. A lot yep. of credit. Yep. Joe did a lot of work on that. Joe Perdetto. Um, and um, uh, you know of course with a lot of guidance um, from the city attorney's office to make sure that we weren't crossing um, any legal lines mm -hmm. that would get us uh, into trouble, but finding creative ways to use the laws that are on the books uh, to, to crack down um, and to provide services, right? Um, I, I think um, one of the things that have have made this plan so successful, and, and by the way, um, it has been so successful that you know other cities have reached out and asked, yeah. what, what are you, I remember early on, um, other cities and, and the county. And the county. Yeah. That's right. 
Yep. Well, I remember early on, uh, one of our neighboring cities reached out mm-hmm. and they, they said, um, you know, what are you guys doing? Like we, we've been asking our you know, homeless people that we're not familiar with, you know, where'd you come from? And they're saying you Yeah. Uh, and that, that, that's, that's a new phenomenon. They actually asked us if we could refer them to the consultant that's right. That put our plan together. Yeah. They said they, they saw our plan online and they were really impressed. They wanted to come talk to us. And yeah. we sat down and talked together. And um, besides the fact that they said uh, one of the persons who came to the meeting, uh, you know, frequents Ukaipa a lot. Mm-hmm. And he said that, uh, you know, he's noticed a massive difference. Yeah. And in his daily work, he comes across a lot of people that, uh, you know, have have moved from being, you know, homeless in Ukaipa to being homeless in, in Redlands combined with the fact that he saw this plan online and he wanted to talk to us and find out, you know, what consultant we hired to write that plan and <laughs> how we designed our team right. and what they're doing on a daily basis. Oh. No, that was a, that was a nice uh, compliment, even though he didn't know he was, he was complimenting us. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a call recently with the County. Um, you know, I, others are, are looking at the success we've had and, um, speaking of that success, um, you know, every year, every January, as you know, the 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 county um, countywide does this um, homeless point in time count. Correct. Where they one on one day they have uh, massive volunteers and they literally span every city and count every homeless person they they come in contact with. And yeah, the city has not, nothing not just, to do with it. Right. All we do is kind of like host them and give them a room to use and. Um, but for the most part, the county runs the whole thing. Correct. Uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, no cities messing with numbers and, you know, trying to skew results. This is all the county. Right. And, um, and so, yeah, you know, we launched, um, well, the homeless strategic plan was approved by the city council in September of last year. And, you know, by the time we got everything organized and, you know, hit the ground running, we were in October, Mm -hmm. um, point in time count happens in January. Yep. And so basically three months of actual operations. Yes. That number in January was 41% lower mm-hmm. than it had been the previous January. Yeah. I mean, in three January, months. In, in three months. That that 41% is probably low. Uh, you know, I mean, because I believe that from the prior January, the numbers had actually increased on the streets of Ukaipa. Mm-hmm. And so even though the number was 41% lower than it had been a year ago, yeah. um, it had probably come down a lot more than that, you know, in just in three months. And mm-hmm. we know that since January, um, the numbers have gone down quite a bit more. There are days where uh, it's hard to find a homeless individual on the streets of Ukaipa. Yeah, we're lucky to live in this community. Yeah, no, um, we really are. But I want to talk about what makes the, the plan successful because, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of people in this community, and rightfully so, that are... Um, you know, they have big hearts and are concerned about uh, those who are homeless on the street. And they want to make sure that our plan is not simply going out and busting knees and, and, nope. and moving people uh, to, to another community. That's not what's happening here at all. I've been really proud um, at the number of people we've been able to connect with services and um, you know, get a roof over their heads. Um, you know, we, we lead with helping hand. Um, one of the, the cornerstones of our strategic homeless plan is the solutions oriented policing team or the SOP team. Yep. And you head that team. Yep. And that team uh, consists of uh, two sheriff's deputies. Correct. Um, a dedicated, we created a new uh, code enforcement officer position that's assigned strictly to, to the SOP team. Yes. Uh, she's phenomenal. She she came to us from the city of Banning and had a lot of experience with homelessness uh, coming in. Yeah. Um, you know, it includes uh, county uh, department of behavioral health social workers. Yeah, two two county department of behavioral, behavioral health social workers. Yep. And, and they have all the connections of, you know, services that are available countywide. Mm-hmm. Um, so not just in the city of Ukaipa, but anywhere that there are services they can help connect people with. And of course that SOP team works in conjunction with our, uh, our park rangers mm-hmm. and our public works department. Right. Yep. And so that team goes out every single day and makes contact with every homeless person that they find first offering services. How can we help? But unfortunately, as we know, um, so many, probably over 90%, of the homeless individuals that we encounter refuse help, especially initially. Right. For the most part. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and, um, and that's fine. But, uh, in Ukaipa, if you're going to refuse help, okay, but you can't be causing trouble, right? You, you can't be committing crime on the streets of Ukaipa. It's, it's not one of my favorite lines in the homeless strategic plan is that it is not a crime to be homeless, but it also should not be an excuse to commit crime. Yeah. Right. We will not tolerate crime here in Ukaipa, 
uh, regardless of your housing status. Correct. Right? And so if, if you're not willing to accept help, okay, but you can't be shooting up on the street, leaving needles, you know, uh, defecating in front of a business, blocking a sidewalk, creating blight, right? We're not going to tolerate that here in Ukiah. And so uh, we enforce the law. We enforce it heavily. Um, and um, I think our hope is that people will accept help. But if they don't, um, we're going to contact them every single day until they accept help, get caught doing something illegal, or they decide they'd rather be somewhere where they're not going to get um, contacted every single day. Yeah, I think Mayor Beaver you know, said it best. He said, it doesn't matter whether you live in a cardboard box or a mansion. Um, you know, the law is going to be enforced the same, right? equally. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't speak for the sheriff's department, but I can speak for, you know, the um, intent of the SOP team. And we're not going to step over a dollar to pick up a quarter. So you'll see in a lot of other communities, uh, they have this approach where if somebody is homeless, but they're committing a crime, they will ignore the crime because they're homeless. Um, where here in Ukaipa, and I believe the rest of the sheriff's department, um, but you know, definitely here in Ukaipa, you know, if you're committing a crime, we're going to investigate and if warranted, you know, enforce the laws regarding that crime. On the way to the jail, our SOP team will give you all kinds of information about resources and, you know, try to help you, you know, rehabilitate yourself and get off the street and, uh, you know, become a productive member of society. Mm -hmm. um, however, if uh, you're homeless and, and you're not committing a crime in Ukaipa, our SOP team is going to be out there every single day and make contact with you. In, you know, really in more of like a helping hand way, you know, hey, John, hey, Frank, it's me again. You know, don't forget about those resources. Don't forget about the shelter here. Don't forget about we can help you get your driver's license, your social security card. Look, I just wanted to put a picture of our SOP team up here. Um, so who, yeah. are the, who are these individuals here? Trevor? So on the far left is uh, George. That's one of our behavioral health social workers. Uh, you see uh, Captain Mike Walker, second to left. Uh, next to him is Deputy Juarez. Uh, and then obviously you. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Officer Serrano, which is the city's newest uh, code enforcement employee. Uh, she was hired specifically uh, to deal with homelessness and, you know, uh, um, you know, quality of life issues within the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so the abandoned house that's next to your house that, you know, hasn't been lived in for five years and the homeless are squatting there kind of thing. Not, not my house, just to clarify. Well, maybe your house. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have uh, me, the ugly guy right yeah. there. And then uh, uh, you've got uh, Deputy Castaneda. Um, you know, he's, he's a rock star, both, uh, Gene and Castaneda are rock stars. Uh, I think last time I looked, uh, you know, between the two of them, um, or, or the three of them, uh, they make over 350 contacts every single month. Wow. Uh, on average, Castaneda makes like 40 arrests a month. Um, and, uh, that's just kind of, uh, a highlight to, you know, really what we're doing here. You know, we're, we're not stepping over a dollar to pick up a quarter. Mm -hmm. If you're homeless and you're committing a crime, we're going to enforce the law just like anybody else on the street. Right. We're not going to treat you any different. Um, yeah, they're doing a great job. And then obviously, uh, Captain Sc or uh, Lieutenant Scoble. Right. I just promoted him. It's <laughs> Lieutenant Scoble. Not Captain. Don't do that. He'll get reassigned. We, yeah. we, we want him here. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. This team is doing a, a phenomenal job. I mean, we've had some... Aside from just bringing the numbers down, we've had some phenomenal success getting people into uh, into help. We're really lucky. Uh, I don't know what it is. I'll be honest with you. I mean, be, besides the fact that we have talented employees, you know, uh, talented partners, and they're doing a really good job going out every single day and networking with other nonprofits in our community. And I encourage them, hey, you know, hey, go take them to lunch. You know, mm -hmm. see what we can do for them because they're always doing something for us, right? It's a two way road. But, you know, I, I think that a lot of other communities are, are probably doing something, you know, similar, you know, in their approach to the relationship with our external partners, but there's something secret in the sauce of the recipe that they're doing because, you know, we've had enormous success 
uh, getting people into rehab, getting into, you know, transitional housing, into long-term housing. Um, we've gotten multiple letters uh, from people saying, hey, I was contacted by your SOP team. It was actually this team right here, uh, Deputy Juarez and Officer uh, Serrano. They contacted a couple living in their car over at the uh, rest stop off the freeway. Um, the couple had moved into California with hopes of finding jobs. It didn't work out. You know, they're living in their car, you know, trying to make ends meet. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, they got them into some transitional housing. They helped them get their ID cards and their social security card. They were able to get jobs and now they're off the street and, you know, living a good life. Oh, you know, so that's, funny. that's what it's up, all about. Right it's there. what it's all about. Right. They end up writing a letter and, you know, we gave, uh, you know, uh, the sheriff's department gave uh, Deputy Juarez and I gave Officer Serrano kind of added voice for, you know, really making an impact on somebody's life. Yeah, that's phenomenal. I know that um, residents in the community have, have noticed a difference. Our businesses have noticed a difference. In fact, um, at a recent city council meeting, one of our business owners in the uptown, um, mm -hmm. who um, is also very active with our Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. Uh, stood up at the podium and uh, and said, this is really working. I mean, this is, I don't know what you guys are doing, but it's it, it's working. Thank you. Please keep doing it. In fact, do, do, we have, do we have that video? People in the uptown have noticed a remarkable difference in the number of transients and the problems that we've been having. And I know that all of the business owners there truly appreciate what has been done with that. Yeah. That's awesome. No, I hadn't seen that. You had, yeah, no, I mean, and, and we're getting that kind of feedback uh, on a regular basis now where people are, are really noticing. We, I know also there's have a, a, we also have a letter to the editor. Oh, let's see it. Kudos to Lieutenant Ski Scoville and his team for the amazing solutions wearing policing plan for handling homeless issues in Ukaipa. I've never seen a plan that, that comprehensive and thorough for dealing with all the different aspects of this issue. Well done. And thank you. Blessings on your efforts, your team, and those who are working so hard on helping. That's awesome. Wayne Purcell. Yeah. That's, I hadn't seen that know, either. Uh, I, I love seeing positive letters because you know, normally uh, it's when someone's upset or unhappy about something that yeah. they're motivated to write. So yeah. for someone to take the time to to you know, send that in, it's uh, it's awesome. They feel passionate about it and uh, they've noticed a big difference. I heard something from a, uh, a gentleman who was a proprietor of a business down off uh, Calamesa and County Line Road. Uh, this business had been plagued with homelessness. He was... Uh, you know, one of the frequent uh, callers into the city and callers into the sheriff's department saying, hey, what are you guys going to do about this? I just heard last night uh, that, uh, you know, the SOP team, they end up just, you know, parking in their parking lot, showing a presence, flying the star, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, writing their reports and stuff like that. You know, trying to dissuade people from hanging out in his parking lot. And he came out and said, I don't know what you guys are doing, but it's working because uh, I don't see anybody down here anymore. And, uh, you know, I have another property up in Uptown and, you know, we go out for lunch, we go out for dinner and we used to be, you know, uh, you know, kind of attacked by all these homeless, you know, begging for money and, you know, sleeping next to our parked car. And he said, I don't see any of them anymore. Uh, that, that, and that goes to the quality of life here in Ukepa, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's amazing to see that progress. Um, yeah, they're doing a great job. I'm really proud of them. You know, um, as, as great as that success has been, it's not one of these problems that you solve it and then it's done, right? It's, it's, it's going to be a constant um, um, effort. Um, uh, I mean, I think it's even another require... name for homeless or transients, right? right. They, they move around, so there are always uh, different people coming uh, in, into town. Uh, the, the homeless strategic plan includes a, a five-step process, and step four of that process is reduction of attractants. Mm -hmm. right? I want to talk about that because there are there are a couple different ways that we really need the community to, to engage here, right? Um, one of the ways is in helping us to reduce the attractants. And uh, I think we've had some success there. Uh, as an example, um, a lot of the, the churches in town uh, would do food pantries, clothes giveaways um, that were uh, attracting uh, homeless to the city of Ukaipa um, and you and the SOP team have had a lot of success working with those churches and nonprofits to not stop doing that, but to organize it in a, in a better way that provides the service, but maybe isn't the same uh, level of attractant all throughout town. Yeah. Um, well, to back up one, you were talking mm -hmm. about um, 
you know, the homelessness is, you know, not just solved overnight and it's right. going to require constant effort. I think in light of the grants pass ruling and, you know, obviously the massive problems that the city of Los Angeles has, you know, those homeless people are going to have to go somewhere. You know, the L.A., L.A. County, Anaheim, Santa Ana, all these big communities that have been plagued uh, with, you know, uh, uh, you know, people camping out in public spaces as a result of the 2018 ruling in uh, Boise versus Idaho, mm -hmm. uh, which was just recently overturned with the uh, Grants Pass. Martin, uh, Martin versus Boise, I think. Was the, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. No, um, I mean, and, and, Martin, and they're going to have to go somewhere. Yeah. Right. And, and that's going to be something that, you know, the citizens of Ukaipa and the SOP team, the city and the sheriff's department are going to all have to buckle down. We're going to have to make sure that, you know, we have the funding and we have the personnel and support from the community to keep the pressure on because those homeless people are going to have to go somewhere. And most likely, you know, they're going east. Right. I, I agree with you. I, you know, so uh, Martin v. Boise, um, a, a lot of jurisdictions saw that as a big problem. And it has been a challenge because it, it basically said you, you can't outlaw camping on public property unless there's a, uh, you have enough beds for the number of homeless people in, in, to, to go to. Right? So the, the idea being, um, you know, you can't tell someone they can't, you know, someone, ha people have to sleep. They have to be somewhere, right? So if you don't have beds for them to go to, then you can't enforce the law. Right? And, and that had been a challenge. But um, uh, recently the grants passed decision, the Supreme mm -hmm. Court said, reverse that and said, no, no, you, you can, you can outlaw that. That's not cruel and unusual punishment correct it's, you know um ninth circuit said it was a violation of the eighth amendment under cruel and unusual punishment correct mm -hmm. right and so the supreme court overruled that and cities are celebrating saying finally and, and the governors come out and saying hey crack down and um i'm very concerned about it for the reasons you stated because uh, yeah. what we're doing in here in ukaipa is working yeah and and now communities are going to be chasing homeless people out of their communities and where they're going to go. Well, some of them are going to end up here. Yeah. And one of the attractants that we've had here in Ukaipa has been the Omni Trans bus system. Yeah. Right? I call it the, uh, you know, they say it's the tran transit center. Mm. I call it the transient center. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. so Ukaipa is the last city in San Bernardino County before you get into Riverside County. So we are the, that transit center is the end of the line for the Omni Trans bus uh, system. So homeless people get on that bus from all over the county. Um, and some of them come to our county from L.A. County and, yep. other, and other places, a lot of them. Um, bus shows up in Ukaipa at our transit center. And, um, you know, it's either the end of the night or, you know, it's, it's their, lunch. their lunch. And the driver uh, stops to get lunch. Everyone's got to get off the bus. Mm -hmm. And those homeless people get off the bus and they now they're in Ukaipa and they start wandering around the streets of Ukaipa. Right? Yeah. And that that's a, a, a real challenge for us. I think we're going to see an increase in that after the grants pass decision. I agree. Um, and so we're going to have to be vigilant. That um, and, you know, you now have, you know, the Metro going all the way into Redlands. Right. And, you know, uh, kind of, you know, deadheading and end of the line in Redlands. Right. Redlands has a massive homeless population. Right. And, uh, you know, th those people from L.A. and, uh, you know, all over Orange County and so forth are going to have to go somewhere. Yeah. And my fear is, like you said, they're going to go east. Yeah. And, you know, commonly one of the things that we heard from the homeless in Ukaipa, we'd ask, you know, why did you choose Ukaipa? You know, we're trying to figure it out. Like, what about Ukaipa? We, you know, we're we're kind of um, isolated from the rest of the county. We don't have the DMV and we don't have the 24 hour liquor stores. You know, we don't have the massive shopping centers that you can, you know, beg for change at. You know, all the things that would attract you to being homeless in a community we really don't have. So what brought you here? They said it's easy to be homeless here. Hmm. You know, people hmm. are so nice. Hmm. People are so giving here. Hmm. Um, they, probably, they probably feel safe compared to some other communities. Well, that too. That's the other thing. They said that there are so few homeless and it's rural. Right. So, um, you know, the, the, the risk of them being robbed or stabbed or their things taken from them when they leave their transient camp are very low. Right. You know, we really want to provide help to those who want help. And, and the truth of the matter is in San Bernardino County, there are so many resources. There is really no reason why someone has to be on the streets yeah. here in San Bernardino County and, and, and in Ukaipa. So I, I, what I want the community to understand is that we're here to help, yeah. but we're also here to keep our community safe. Yeah. Right. And we, we, we need people's help. We need people to stop doing some things that, um, that enable and attract homelessness. 
um, you know, there's a, an anti panhandling campaign. Um, I believe the, the phrase is uh, a real change, not spare change. Right. You're correct. Yeah. Uh, because when you just give a homeless person money, it, it enables them to stay on the street. It enables usually their, their drug habit. Right. And so, um, but, but what I also uh, really want to ask the community for their help with is uh, reporting when they see people in need. If you, if you see someone who's, who's homeless or, or seems to be high on drugs, uh, talking to themselves in bad shape, um, please don't feel that if you report that, uh, you're doing something to hurt that person. Mm -hmm. it, it's the opposite. Uh, uh, that person needs help. Yeah. And, and we're here to help. We're here to um, offer help to those individuals and at the same time uh, to protect our community and protect, protect our, our quality of life. And, um, you know, we've developed, you know, the, we have an app, the UKIP app. The, yep. And we've used that app uh, for reporting public works, you know, issues, potholes, you know, uh, park maintenance issues, et cetera. But we've developed um, a, a section of that app to report homeless issues. Um, and I'd like to, if, can we put that app up on the, uh, on the screen? Coincidentally, yesterday I was asked by Captain Walker, he said, hey, can you do me a favor and find out how many times people reported homeless issues via the app mm -hmm. in the city of july what was it joe like 384 reports do you remember it was 48. you were close you were close 48 yeah no <laughs> where's my phone <laughs> are you sure uh, it, it may be the 300 figure since we've launched the app but no it, it's uh it, joe's right the numbers in the double digits but that's still a lot for one month 48. Yeah, yeah, it was 48, my bad. <laughs> I don't know where I got 300 and something from. I had to I go mean, back it sounded and like, you know what? Like, yeah, it sounded really good. Yeah. But um, so this app is phenomenal. You can go right on, click on report a homeless issue. If you don't want to type anything, you can just hit submit and it geotags your location. So this report gets sent right to our SOP team, um, every member of our SOP team. And um, the, the location is, is identified so they saw, saw you can, can respond right away. You can adjust your location. So yes. if you left the area mm -hmm. and it would geotag theoretically where you're at right now, mm -hmm. but the area that you saw the issue is you know, in was, you know, five miles away at the park that you mm -hmm. already left. You can adjust that map right. and drag and click I've it. done that. Yeah. I've done that. Because sometimes you're driving, you can't just slam on the brakes and stop there. Right. right. But no, this is great. You can enter a description if you want to. You can say what you witnessed. Um, uh, you can enter an address or just uh, it'll automatically pin where you are. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, you hit send um, and it uh, it goes to our, uh, it, you can enter your personal information or you can submit it anonymously. anonymously. Yep. yep. Um, if you submit your information, it will update you, uh, when, uh, you know, the issue has been resolved. Um, but it's, uh, it's a great tool. Uh, a lot of people have been using it. Um, uh, one of our council members in particular, when he has spare time, goes, he goes driving yeah, he tests us. the city he, of Ukiah and using he this finds, app. He finds something wrong and he'll, he'll send it in and he'll park and wait to see how long it takes the deputy <laughs> to get there. I love it. Which I is good. It. You know, honestly, like it keeps us on our toes. Yeah. So yeah. it's good. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how proud I am of this program and the work uh, you and the SOP team are doing. Um, this is one of the most tangible ways uh, I think the public can see the uh, improvements that are going on in our community, uh, the quality of life improvements yeah. uh, in, in our in our community. Um, and so, you know, thank you. Uh, no, you know, it, it's not me, sir. It's the, the people that, that we work with every single day, you know, that are a part of this team. They're the ones out there every single day, you know, hitting the streets and, you know, they deserve the recognition. Well, that's what they keep telling me, that you really don't do much of anything. No, Actually, in fact, just, we have a picture of, of that. Let's, how do you getting all yeah, these pictures? See, there, there's you working Oh, that's really an old hard. picture. That's, see, yeah. I, I had a thyroid <laughs> disorder. It was undiagnosed. <laughs> I was tired all the time. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. But you look good. Look at that. All tactical up there. Yeah, that was, that was I many years ago. That was many years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it was medical condition. So, you know, back when you were tired. a cop, you got, you got away with, now you're actually busy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, a different busy, but yeah, yeah. Different busy. <laughs> and now I actually, I, for the most part, I, I actually go to sleep at a normal hour every single well, night. That's the thing Very that's crazy lucky. to me. I mean, I, I know how many hours you work. I mean, like I said, I mean, you work a full-time job here, 40 plus hours. Mm -hmm. 
I doubt you've done a 40 hour week here. It's probably always, you know, yes. much, much longer than that. hundred percent. Um, and then you're doing the, 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 the SWAT team duty on top of that. And my phone's going off. And, and you got to train because you're an old guy. You got to keep up with the young guys on the SWAT team. Man, they're right? studs. Um, <clears throat> they're studs. I'm, I'm literally going out, jumping out with my team when I get off work here. Wow. See, yeah. and, and given all of that, how crazy your life is, yeah. you once told me that, um, you feel like you know, you can relax now compared to what your, your life used to be like. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. You actually you know, get this, a day off every once in a while. A good day off every once in a while. You know, this, this is uh this is stressful, but it's, it allows me to, you know, use my brain in a way that really I've never used before. Um, and, uh, I enjoy it. It's def definitely different for me. Yeah. You know, you're having to, you know, tame me, you know, into, <laughs> you know, a, a civilized office person. Right. You know, I used to make fun of people like me. If only, you know, 20 year back, you know, me could see me now, he'd be so disappointed. Uh, I don't think he'd, so. He'd call him a carpet cop. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think he'd look at you and say, yeah, I turned out pretty, uh, he'd call him a carpet pretty cop. Pretty badass. Yeah. So no, I'm really lucky. I'm, I'm very, you know, blessed in the way my life's turned out. And, um, I appreciate the opportunities here. Well, we're, but, we're, we're blessed to have you. Yeah. I, I, I love this community. Uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about it. I love being here. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunities. You know, I'm grateful, honestly, for the citizens that live in this community because without their support every single day, I think you asked me at the beginning of the uh, the podcast, like, hey, like this is a great community to be a firefighter or a great community to be a law enforcement officer in. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was thinking, like, this is a great community to, you know, be in public safety. And I think the reason why is, you know, we have a very supportive community. Uh, you know, we're not that community that's plagued by drugs in the sense that, you know, we have cartel members running around and shootouts all the time. You know, we, uh, we, you know, for the most part, you know, uh, uh, you know, pretty conservative town and, uh, you know, the, for the most part, you know, they support law enforcement, right? They support fire. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, the, the deputies and firefighters, come into work every single day saying that uh, someone tried to buy me lunch. You know, they actually thanked me. Um, you know, guys that come to, here to work overtime say, man, like I've never been thanked before, you know, in wow. their entire career, they go around and, like no one ever thanked them for their help. And uh, this is the community where you can do that. No, I, you know, it's, it's one of the things that drew me to this community when I decided to move here in 2015, because I was working at the county at the time in San Bernardino, and I was I was looking around. I wanted to move closer to work. Um, I looked at all the communities in, in the region, and just fell in love with Ukaipa. Uh, and it was you know a lot of things. It was just the the more rural, like a beautiful environment, the mountains. You mm -hmm. know, I love it when they're covered with snow. It's just beautiful here. We but, almost get four seasons here. Almost. Yeah. But um, but also really it was the people. Right. I mean, yeah. just just a um, small town feel, small town, patriotic, super patriotic. Um, supportive of law enforcement. You look at like um, the the what's the event we have at Stater Brothers where they they have their flags and they drive around every single street. Uh, Liberty Lab. Liberty Lab. Yeah. The, yeah. the same group that runs that runs something called CRB, mm -hmm. uh, the Citizens Review Board, Civil Review Board, Civil Review yes, Board. Yeah. And uh, there you talked about our, our, our partnership with the faith faith based community. You know, um, and they were the conduit to link us up with the Ukaipa Ministerial Association, mm -hmm. where we have meetings with every single month. And we talk to them about homeless issues. We talk to them about preparedness. Mm -hmm. We talk to them about crime. We'll talk to them about, you know, city issues. Um, and they're working cooperatively with us to try to combat the homelessness in Ukaipa. You know, try to get people off the streets and not enable people but help people. And, uh, you know, through their partnership, uh, we've been successful. Yeah. Well, that, that's amazing. Well, uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, and uh, thank you again for being our first victim here on, uh, Ukaipa 360. You'll have to do it again. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely. be, we'll I hate talking about myself. It's like the most uncomfortable thing on planet earth because in, in my, you know, profession for the most, you know, majority of my career, it's a you know, law enforcement agency you know, just like fire and it's that they're paramilitary organizations. And the last thing you do is talk about yourself. Uh, it's very faux pas. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll be better on the next one. Well, we'll have to find uh, better photos next time too. To... Okay. Game on. <laughs> Game on, buddy. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Speaking of, are you wearing makeup? I am wearing makeup. Oh, do you okay. like it? 
I mean, you don't look shiny. Well, like I do. I'm married, so don't get any ideas. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. Well, try it. Trevor Benson, public safety manager for the city of Yukaipa, reserve sheriff's deputy, all around great guy. Thank you. Thank you, sir.